Welcome to the CMO Spotlight, and I'm here with Randy Stipes, who is the Vice President for IBM Brand Marketing, but also the Chief Marketing Officer for the Weather Company. Welcome, Randy. Thanks so much. Great to talk with you, Joe. You too. So I wondered if you could tell us first a little bit about the Weather Company and how that fits within the IBM universe, and then we'll talk a little bit more about your role and your path. Yeah, I'm happy to. So Listen, let's start with the weather company. The weather company provides trusted, accurate information to help people and businesses make smarter decisions. It's as simple as that. Um, you know, given weather impacts every single person, every single person on the planet, every day, you know, that's a massive responsibility. We're the world's most accurate forecaster. We're a top 10 most trusted brand. Those are distinctions that our team um, is really proud of and something that we work tirelessly to uphold. And the weather company is owned, our parent company is IBM, which has been great because it has allowed us to really accelerate our business and our technology, give us access to data and technology that improves our forecasting, as well as improves the solutions that we bring to many of our customers. Because the weather company spans both B2B across several industries, as well as B2C. We have three consumer brands, including the Weather Channel, our flagship um, app and brand. Hopefully everyone watching has the Weather Channel app on their phone. I have to have that small plug. Yeah. Um, but IBM has been very a very good home to us in allowing us to really lean into some of the technology, technology like AI, um, to really provide greater value to our consumers and our customers. Awesome. So uh, you talked a little bit about B2B and B2C. Can you just give me a quick example of what you, that means to you? I mean, in the B2B world, I know you have lots of data about about consumers and and about uh, and then also obviously the B2C side, it's consumers actually using the products. Yeah, exactly. So on the B2B side, I'll start there on the enterprise part of our business. We span a lot of different industries. Our, the core industries that we focus on today, um, the advertising industry. So how do we take 40 years of not just weather data, you can get weather data a lot of places, whether it's a commodity, right? But how do we take 40 years of weather data and translate that into insights? We know how weather impacts consumer behavior. So for a brand, you can imagine it's incredibly valuable to understand how weather impacts consumer behavior so that a brand can go ahead and take advantage of those insights to drive their business. What kind of weather might prompt someone to buy soup? It's not as binary as you would think because weather is relative, right? What might prompt behavior in, um, for you sitting in Atlanta, that's a very different weather conditions that would prompt that behavior than say someone sitting in Minnesota. So we take that data translate it into insights to help brands better better connect with, with their customers. We also have um, an aviation business where we are providing really critical weather information and weather solutions that power more than 25,000 flights a day. Wow. Um, which is, you know, becoming even more important as the weather is becoming incredibly erratic and volatile, you know, seasonal norms are out the window. Um, so that is certainly a core part of our business. And we're also in the broadcast media space as well in working with TV stations, both here in the United States, as well as, as globally to provide them with weather solutions that power their broadcast. So those are some examples that people probably aren't as familiar with, with the enterprise part of our business. And then on the consumer part of our business, we have more than 400 million people every month who come to one of our digital properties. 
um, and trust us to give them information to make better decisions. So that is, we have the Weather Channel app, weather.com. We have, um, and then we have two complementary weather brands and experiences, Weather Underground, as well as Storm Radar, which is really very much a um, focused on radar maps um, mm -hmm. and kind of bringing greater hyperlocal information. That, that, it's, that it's gives you a cool. better, better yeah, that it's, that's perfect. Thank you so much, Randy. So I'm curious to know a little bit more about your role as chief marketing officer. What does the team look like? What kinds of things do you all do? And you know, what's the function of marketing within the weather company? Yeah, it's um, thank you for the question. First, I have to say, I'm so grateful. Um, I feel like I have the best team in the industry. Um, because our portfolio is so diverse with, you know, in sh we have different audiences. And so we need to make sure that we take a customer first and audience first approach. So we make sure I have marketers who are very focused on the consumer part of our business. How do we ensure that we are driving acquisition? Um, there's more than, you know, there's thousands of weather apps that people have to choose from. Um, how do we make sure that we're driving acquisition? And more importantly, long-term, how do we make sure that we're driving brand preference and brand relevance? And so I have marketers who are very skilled in that area and super passionate about ensuring that we are creating um, and upholding our brand trust. Um, and then have the, and then the, they have members of the team that are more focused on the enterprise part of the business that I talked about. How do we make sure that that marketers, that brands um, in the advertising space understand the influence that weather does have on consumer behavior? So um, really making sure that we are bringing those insights to the forefront and um, and top of mind because I think sometimes it's very you know. It's subconscious. We don't think about just how much weather influences everything that we do. And so we need to bring those examples to the forefront. We um we like to say that weather is the original influencer. And so we have, you know, I have a team who's really committed to bringing that message to market. Excellent. So I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about your career path. I know you're originally from California and that you've been with the weather company for almost 20 years. Um, but so you made the, I think you began your career as a kind of a digital producer for local yep. TV stations in, in California. And then you eventually made transition, I think, to UPS and then, and then to weather company. So I'm curious just to hear a little bit about how that career path went. Yeah. I'll, so I'll give you the short version. Um, you know, I've always been in the media and the marketing space. You're right. I started in TV news. You know, I had these grand aspirations, completely naive that I would want to be on camera someday. You know, I joke the next, the next Diane Sawyer, who I completely um, idolize, still do. Um, but ended up staying more behind the scenes and, and certainly no regrets. But I started in TV news, working at a variety of TV stations across the country and was always more, again, behind the scenes in content and in editorial type roles. And then I moved into product management. Um, how do I, and in the weather space specifically, how do I create products um, consumer products to help people understand the various ways that weather impacts their life, not just their safety, but their, their activities, their pets, um, their health. We know that there's a huge correlation with consumers' um, health um, and, and weather. And it was funny because a real, you know, we, we always, I think, remember these kind of defining moments in our career um, where a former CRO at the weather company started taking me out on sales calls. He wanted me to, you know, the sales guy always wants to, you know, have the product person, the SME come in and, and talk about what they're, what they're building and how, a, at that time, how an advertiser could get involved. So I started going on sales calls and I really learned the value of getting out from behind my desk. And mm -hmm. I loved talking to clients um, and really understanding 
their needs and how we could partner. And that's what prompted me to pursue roles in more like integrated marketing, client solutions, sales enablement, and ultimately marketing. And it was, you know, it's, it's funny, Ginny Rometty, the, you know, former chairman and CEO of IBM, um, she likes to say that, you know, careers are like jungle gyms and not ladders. And I, I believe that I've experienced that. I purposely like are tried to architect my career to wear a lot of different hats so that I could understand different aspects of the business. And through that, identify my strengths, um, identify where I think I can provide the greatest growth. So it's been, it's been a really kind of fun um, journey, not necessarily the straight path, but it's very rewarding work. Um, I've been super fortunate. That's, that's a really neat path. Um, and, you know, you did end up on camera eventually, uh, just, just in small, 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 small bits, right? Indeed. Yeah. So I'm curious if there's a piece of career advice that either you wish you had gotten very early in your career, or maybe you would give to a young person that's just starting out in a marketing career. Oh my gosh. So many mm -hmm. things. Um, I'll narrow it down to two, two pieces of advice um, that I wish someone would have told me earlier. And so I, I try to impart this um, on others. But the first is don't be so hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. Just take advantage of everything that comes to you, no matter how daunting it might be at the time, and just learn. You know, your learning doesn't stop when you get out of school. I think that gives you a wonderful primer. And I do wholeheartedly believe in having that foundational education. But listen, our world is rapidly changing. Our industry is rapidly changing. Um, yes, there's some foundational things that we all need to know, but I would encourage people to surround themselves with people, like surround yourselves with people who are smarter than you and also who are different from you different in what they do and kind of the roles that they they play within their organizations and different in how they think. You know, I feel like it's that diversity of thought and experience. That's how we learn. I would probably wouldn't have approached that CRO who started taking me on sales calls. I was really grateful that he came and he sought me out. But I'd say to a marketer in particular, like, Make friends with your CRO and definitely make friends with your CFO. You have to oh, yeah. search for the value of marketing quite early. Yeah. Well, there's a, I have a question for you later about sort of how that, those relationships with the non-marketing functions within the organization. Vital. How, do you, how do you build those? So yeah. I, I think that everybody has a superpower of some kind. And I'm curious what you believe your superpower might be. Oh, so I'd like to think that my superpower is my ability to unleash creativity in others. Hmm. You know, at, at this stage in my career, my greatest responsibility and my greatest joy is to coach. And I'm a big believer in ideas. I don't think we spend enough time thinking about ideas. Like that's the creative in me at heart. And so I'd like to think that my superpower is giving the team uh, permission and confidence to think creatively, to think differently, and to think big. And there's really nothing more gratifying than igniting that spark in someone. If I can do I that, love, I feel like, you know, I'll proudly wear that superwoman cape. I love that. Um, I'm going to throw you a curveball question here, oh. which is, I think I saw early in your career, one of your titles had copywriting in it. So I'm curious how you feel the pow the importance of being able to write well and, and, and it, how important is that in today's marketing environment? It is, I love the curveball. It is hands down to me, one of the most underrated skills that someone can have. Um, you know, we have to, hopefully every marketer is, you know, not only watching their competition, but watching brands outside of their space. And since you mentioned copywriting, I don't know if you saw the British Airways campaign 
Um, I think they ran this last year. It might've been the year before, but it is brilliant and a perfect example of copywriting. They went in and produced over 500 pieces of creative um, across print, uh, digital, out of home is what caught my eye, where they relied solely on copy. No visuals, it was just all copy. And it was built on this really simple and familiar question. Like how often when we travel, are we asked the question, like, are you traveling for business or are you traveling for leisure? Pretty basic premise. British Airways introduced a third option in each piece of their creative um, to capture all of the reasons that people travel. So again, it was just, it was no, there were no visuals. It was mm. just really incredibly clever writing to capture all of those reasons. And so, you know, I looked at that and I was so inspired by the simplicity and the cleverness of the writing. I am a firm believer, Joe, like words matter. And I think that I'm very much, I'd like to, to I'd like to think that I'm a marketer who has the right balance of, of using data and creativity. But I do think that we've swung the pendulum so far into the data and the performance space that we lose sight of how important language and vocabulary is. I, I, I love that point. Um, I always say not just the language, but creative creativity has the power to move people to take action. No it's, question. Whether it's to tears or laughter or to buy that thing or fill out that form or whatever the call to action is, creative has the power to move people. And while focus groups are great and data is great and important, and, and it's important that that's the foundation usually for the, the engagement point or, or, or uh, essence of the brand and essence of the consumer, creativity has the power to move somebody to take action. It sounds like, you know, British Airways encapsulated that in their, their campaign to say, look, there are lots of reasons that people travel and we want to come get, get to the core of that. Exactly. Yes. If you haven't seen it, um, British Airways is not paying me for this. I'm <laughs> that, that impressed with that campaign. I'm curious if there are certain values that you either want to demonstrate to your team or maybe that you demand of somebody that would be on your team at the weather company. Yeah. Um, you know, I find myself drawn to people and want to grow old with people. I like to say, who are the people I really want to grow old with? Mm -hmm. um, I think there's there's four qualities that that come to mind. I certainly try to exhibit them myself, sometimes more successfully than others. But I first and foremost, I look for vision. You know, the details matter, um, but we can't lose sight of the big picture. Uh, and I think particularly for leaders, it's our responsibility to think about, to think bigger than ourselves um, and establish a vision that is widely understood, um, one that unites and rallies everyone across the company, not only your team, but you have to be a, able to influence across the company to get everyone to contribute towards a common goal. Mm. Meeting your quarterly revenue numbers is vitally important, but that's not vision. Uh, the second, I would say, um, is agility. And listen, we all know it is essential to be able to adapt uh, in today's incredibly fast-changing market ever-changing customer needs, technology advancements that are really challenging to keep up with. And I look for people who have a high tolerance for ambiguity and mm. change um, because that's just, that's our norm. There's always going to be disruptive business challenges and market challenges. And I look for people who kind of run towards those challenges versus retreating. The third, I would say, is influence. Um, there's a measurable value in being able to influence others to get work done. And that requires being skilled at reading people. You've got to be able to read the room. You've got to be able to be attuned to people's needs and motivations. And I think it's interesting. You know, we're told our entire lives, by the, you know, from the time that we're small children, to live by the golden rule to treat people how you want to be treated. And I think that's wrong in business. I think that 
we need to learn how to treat and motivate people how they want to be treated, understand mm. people's mm. personal motivations. That's situational leadership. Um, and then I mentioned there's there's four. I think above all is I look for integrity, which really doesn't require any explanation. <laughs> right. That's great. Those are those are great principles to live by. So I got vision, agility, influence, and integrity. Got it. Hey, if you can nail those four things, I think those are good, good values for life, not just not just for work. I agree. Yeah. So uh as you may know, setup helps marketers thrive by connecting them with the right resources, whether that be marketing agencies or people. And often what we do is we connect brands and agencies together. So we don't live in the space where we're not a marketing agency. We're not on the client side or brand side, but we really work together with both to sort of bring them together. And so we have this unique position to really understand both uh, pretty well. And so I'm curious, either at the weather company or even in previous lives, how do you work with agencies? You know, do you, do you work with agencies and in, in what capacity? Yeah. So yes, the short answer is yes, we do work with agencies. I would say we do it selectively. We do it intentionally. I really look to agencies for two different scenarios. First is there might be an area of expertise that, that we're lacking. And second, if there's a level of efficiency that an agency can provide to free up my in-house team to focus on other projects, then I think agencies are great in that capacity as well. Yeah, we we often say it's capability for the first one. It's like, hey, they're good at something that we're just not good at, or we couldn't possibly have all of the specialists to be specialists in every single area that maybe an agency can have. Or we say it's capacity. You know, exactly we need more right. arms and legs to be able to execute the things we're trying to accomplish. That's far more eloquently than I put it. <laughs> I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. And I think, listen, in terms of the capabilities, it's impossible. There's between technology, new platforms. Yeah. Um, we have to, it goes back to, to the advice. You have to surround yourself with people who are smarter than you and who specialize in those areas. And if if agencies can fill those, those gaps um, and help us get stronger. I think it's, it's a great partnership. Yep. So are there certain disciplines that you feel really we need to own in-house because they're core to our business? Or are there some others that you feel, I really want to always get outside perspective or usually get outside perspective because we need, you know, because they work on clients that are in different industries than us or bring some best practices that we maybe wouldn't get if we try to do things just in-house? Yeah. So one, I would say, I don't have a hard and fast rule around it, but generally speaking, you know, we do partner with agencies around our, to do some of our media planning and our media buying, some of our event execution. Um, an example where there's, there's a capabilities gap right now is that we're really trying to partner with agencies so that we can get smarter on social, particularly mm -hmm. around yeah. the effective use of influencers. That's not a muscle that we've developed internally yet. We're getting there. We're getting smarter thanks to some really great agency partners, but we need to under better understand um, that craft. And then I think in terms of like what I hold precious um, and what I really want to keep in house, I'm in an incredibly fortunate position and that I have an exceptional in-house creative team. They do not all, but nearly all of the creative, both for our B2B and our B2C go-to-market. And I love nothing more than being in the kitchen with them brainstorming. We talked about about writing. I'm sure they don't always love it, but um, I, find, <laughs> I find it super energizing. And I think it is important that, um, again, every brand has to do what's right for them. But for us, um, I like having that option and that expertise in-house. And then on a project, you know, on, on select projects, we will bring in uh, agency partners because I just want sometimes a different perspective. Makes sense. So, um, we talked a little bit about partnering with the CFO and partnering with maybe 
the non-marketing functions in the organization. So I'm sure I'm I'm curious about how you demonstrate the value of marketing to those that don't live and breathe marketing every day, and 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 some even that think marketing is just a cost center that you know that that costs us a lot of money. So how do you work with them? Yeah, I recently had our CFO say um, it was it was in um, kind of a cross functional meeting that we need to make a greater investment in marketing. And it was it was hands down like a career <laughs> defining moment. <laughs> um, but listen, to, to answer the question, we we have to ultimately show our value by driving business growth. Um, that can mean short-term growth. That's really easy to measure. I mentioned audience acquisition earlier. How am I bringing audience into, you know, to download the Weather Channel app? But then also I think it's longer term value. We have to play the long game and show our value and how we're driving brand health, how we're driving relevancy. And I would describe all of those things, like that's the what. But I think equally important, Joe, is how we're driving the value and yeah. how we show value and how we show up every day. You know, how do we collaborate with our product teams? How do we collaborate with our sales teams by being customer facing and anticipating their needs? And the team has worked really hard to earn the respect of our cross-functional peers. We are seen as a trusted partner. We're invited to the table, mm -hmm. um, not just to look at marketing strategy, but to really collaborate on business strategy. That didn't happen overnight. We've had to work We've had to work hard of that, at that, and I'm really proud of the internal reputation um, that we've developed. That's important and uh, hard to do, but to hear those magic words from your CFO saying we really ought to be investing more in marketing <laughs> is rare, and congratulations on building <laughs> partnership uh, with that person and, and getting them to at least you know, see the value of marketing. So we, we need to figure out, I think any other marketers listening need to probably reach out to you and understand how you made that magic happen. Um, Again, not overnight. It You have to be, the other thing I'll add is you have to consistently show value. And that's not by just beating your chest. It's by yeah. showing up at the table and being a real thought leader and a thought partner in, in driving business strategy and transformation. Yeah. And, and I, I'll, I mean, a kind of follow on question to that is some of the marketing that we do is more brand focused and isn't really directly tied to ROI and some is more direct, you know, ROI focused. So how do you get buy in for the more brand focused marketing that's not tied to a specifically download, you know, users downloading the app or, or things like that? Listen, I think in a space like weather or weather is a commodity. As I said before, people have options. Um, we get buy-in because in this instance, like brand is product, product is brand. Um, the brand matters. And particularly in the space where trust is so important, um, it is, it's showing how the value of being a recognized and trusted brand not only like that's not only a, a, a kind of a, a marketing ambition, like you have to establish a culture where I feel like everyone feels a level of responsibility in that, where everyone feels a role in building that brand. You have to make brand not just a marketing activity, but a true like brand building becomes a company responsibility so that there's a level of pride and commitment that that goes into that. I think that's the only way um, that that kind of work is going to be prioritized. That's great. Okay, so um, one more marketing related question and then yeah. a couple just for fun. Sure. So I'm curious if there's a specific campaign or a program, either recent or from the past that taught you a great deal was valuable because either it was a huge flop and you 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 learned a really important lesson from it or maybe it was a huge success that maybe you'd want to emulate again in the future I mean listen I think we generally learn more from our failures than we do from our successes it's a it's an important rite of passage 
Um, but I'm not going to take that route for this this um, this example. So um, one that has always stood with me. Um, a few years ago, we launched a brand campaign for the Weather Channel, specifically the Weather Channel app, where we showcased the role that weather plays in in life moments and the importance of having an accurate forecast. So think about your child's birthday party an outdoor wedding. Mm -hmm. And in the outdoor wedding piece of creative, um, we showed two women getting married in that ad. And this was the first time um, that as the Weather Channel brand, as well as like for IBM as our parent company, mm, yeah, we had featured a same-sex couple in our advertising. And it wasn't with this, like, it wasn't a big thing. We weren't out to make a statement. Um, when our creative team first showed me the concept, like there wasn't even discussion about it. It was just with the goal of featuring two people who were in love, two people on one of the happiest days of their lives who didn't want mother nature to spoil their plans. Right. And again, for us, it wasn't a thing, but sadly, because of the, gross injustice and ignorance that still exists in our society, we recognize that it could have very easily been made into a thing. So we didn't hesitate, um, but we were aware that there was a risk uh, and we did it anyway. And what I learned from that experience and why, like, or perhaps it just reminded me is that one, as marketers, we should always take risks you know, not in an irresponsible way, informed and calculated risks, but risks nonetheless. And two, it reminded me that doing the right thing is always the right thing. Yeah. And oh, by the way, the campaign outperformed all mm. of our benchmarks. Like it was wildly successful, but it was it was a real moment of, I think, of pride also. Um, again, we didn't set out to make a statement, but um, I'm so glad that the team had had the courage. It shouldn't take courage to do that anymore, but I'm so glad at the time the team had the courage to do the right thing. Yeah. Well, they, they knew that it was a risk. They were willing to take the risk. You were willing to take the risk. And then ultimately the risk paid off, which validated that it was worth taking the risk. Yeah. I'm a big I fan know. of brands that take responsible risks. Okay. So I'm going to transition to a couple of just fun questions just to wrap things up. It'll kind of yeah. rapid fire. So the first is, is there a band or a movie or a sports team or a book or a quote that really inspires you? And what is it about that thing that inspires you most? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to take the, well, I guess it's a movie and a book. So the, Wiz the Wizard of Oz is my favorite mm. movie. Um, first, can I just say, I agree with Dorothy. There's no place like home um, <laughs> yep. one to that, um, no matter where I go and, and the people I meet, like, I feel so blessed to walk in the door and, and say, there's I, no place like home would rather be. Do you here travel with your Ruby slippers everywhere you go? I mean, I do have some, some red, <laughs> red slippers, but I'm more of a Birkenstocks girl these days. Okay. Um, and then I think more than that though, like look at. Dorothy's journey of self-discovery and what is ultimately like this timeless story and less and, and lesson. You know, she brings out the best in everyone she comes in contact with, you know, helping them discover their brain, their courage, their heart. Um, and then she ultimately finds her own power, which was in her all along. And I think there's just something really beautiful and poetic. I think there's lessons in that that transcend business into life. So um, it's not just because there's a tornado in the movie and it's a weather themed movie. There's yeah, some. I was going to say, we'll, we'll, we'll ignore the whole murder streak that she had going as well, but that's another story. And Joe, seriously, look what I keep on my desk. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so great. That's my perfect. little Dorothy figurine with Toto in tow. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. I love it. Okay. I'm curious, outside of your family, what inspires, inspires you or, or gives you joy? Do you have any hobbies or things like that? So nature inspires me. I love being active. Um, you know, we, 
my family moved to Florida um, just about a year ago. Um, I love to paddleboard, to ride my bike, to take long walks on the beach. This is starting to sound like a really bad dating profile. Um, <laughs> but hey, I live at the beach for a reason. It gives me immense joy. It gives me incredible peace. You know, at work, we're constantly exercising our minds and I have to shut mine off. Um, mm. at the end of the day, um, definitely, you know, Saturdays is kind of my, my sacred day to put devices away. And I just try to be out in nature and take advantage of my surroundings. I love that. All right. So I'm going to wrap things up just by thanking you. Randy Stipes is the vice president of IBM marketing and the chief marketing officer for the weather company. Randy, this has been such a delight to have this conversation today. Thank you. I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much.